Hello! This is a intake exhaust manifold combination for a Ford Model A. It's not mine, it's from another fellow Model A owner and by now it's the fourth that has been in this shop to get surfaced. And with each exhaust manifold I did, I thought there has to be a way to chuck this thing up more elegantly, more quickly, more accurately and more securely than just, you know, putting it in the vise. I can make a clumping jig to get this thing in place nice and securely. The complex geometry here aside, we have a rather simple problem. We've got two reference surfaces, that is this one here right now, and this one as well. So these ports have to be perpendicular to that and we want this thing straight and not kilted and for that I'm thinking it makes sense to put a block right here, mount the flange right to that and still have it able to you know rotate in either direction. We can accomplish that by putting some kind of spacer in between here and in between here maybe you know, screw it in, screw it out, and then therefore tilt it one way or the other. And um, to have something to rest against, to not just have it lie here by gravity, we can use some kind of exhaust clamp to go right here and right there. Oh yeah! Yeah! I don't get it. The birds are singing for me and my gal. Everybody's been knowing to a wedding they're going. And for weeks they've been sewing. Every Susie and Sam. Alright, the thing is uh, strapped down onto this piece here loosely and you can see it's purposely got a little bit of tilt play here so that I can you know get this thing level set up in the shaper. Now I'm going to have to figure out how to clamp this stuff down and to do so I've got these uh, exhaust clamps. I'm going to go onto here like that and um, yeah I think by making them a little large I can now space these well, in a rather wide range and uh, drill the holes for that and have pins come out from the bottom to act as nuts. They're congregating for me and my girl The parson's waiting for me and my girl and sometime I'm gonna build a little home for two, or three, or four, or more. In love land for me and my gal.
Now I don't have a laser thermometer, but judging by this, I guess it would show a lot of thermos, probably even more than that. You can see that the support screw isn't quite touching here, which is exactly what we want. Now we can go ahead and with these two nuts level out the uh, surfaces to the base. Now this is only rudimentarily with the uh, depth gauge here. Uh, on the shaper I'll redo this with the uh, dial indicator of course. Now we can go ahead and uh, raise this uh, support screw until I can see the thing just about touching. And now we can go ahead and clamp this thing down. If my calculations are correct, this is now securely clamped, ready to go onto the shaper. The issue that I always had is that this thing is longer than the maximum stroke on the shaper. So what I could do is split this into two parts because it's an interrupted cut. I could do this side, turn the thing around, do this side and be done with it which I could never do with the vise because, well, I would have to get it all nice and level once again and see that it's identical in surface between the two. Uh, long story short, I think this contraption now allows me to do that because no matter which way I slide it about, it is still going to be in the same clamping situation. So I can go like this, machine this part, shall we say, and then turn it round, and then machine this part, and in theory be done with it a lot quicker than I would usually be by going across here like that a million times.
never knew he had so many friends before. Jimmy had a sweetheart, she was waiting too. Now the kids are blue, cause the kids found out that Jimmy had a sweetheart, Jimmy had a sweetheart, Jimmy had a sweetheart too. Now comes the moment of truth, the unveiling, if you will, whether this thing held up and kept everything nice and straight, or whether clamping it down in a way like I did actually uh, warped the whole thing. I don't know, we'll see. Now, there is an infinite number of possible outcomes here, but I think the most likely ones are that either I warped the flange while clamping it down, which would make it look something like this, or something like this, or that the uh, two steps in which I machined it are actually a different height, and if one is higher than the other, then it's going to look like this, and if one is lower than the other, then it's going to look like this. Either way, we'll see at the surface plate when we shine a light behind it what the story actually is. One last possibility is that the whole thing is actually flat. Um, and I think <laughs> that's what this one is right here. There is no light coming past here whatsoever. Okay, let me be honest, there is actually a gap right there. Can you see it? Towards the uh, left here. Okay, so this guy here is showing 10, which is one tenth of a millimeter, and this guy here is five hundredths of a millimeter, and the uh, 10 doesn't want to fit under here, and the 5 just over here in the corner, and over here it doesn't. So, um, yeah, we are about five hundredths of a millimeter out. But that is exactly what gaskets are there for. So, I can now package this up and declare it a success. So, where does this leave us? Well, making the jig here took about two days, shall we say ten hours. Surfacing the manifold here only took about 20 minutes as opposed to around about 3 hours clamping it in a universal vise. So, 3 of these will already put me back in time where I was before and um, it was a lot of fun as well. So yeah, sometimes it is worth taking the time and effort to make one of these jigs and um, I'm looking forward to the next couple of manifolds I'm going to have to do. Thank you very much for watching and see ya. Bye!